I am the proud mother of two beautiful, energetic kids, young, gifted, and black. But as a mother, I am afraid that one day they will be funneled into the school-to-prison pipeline. So my husband and I, he a math teacher, eighth grade math teacher, him and I are dedicated to changing that narrative for our kids and all kids. This poem is just simply titled, No More School-to-Prison Pipeline. The kids are our focus. Let's show them what love is. Let's build a foundation where they could fly from. For enough is enough. It's time to disrupt school to prison pipelines no more. School to prison pipelines. Can the biased mind of a white teacher actually tell the difference between a misbehaving black or brown student versus an energetic one? A question that only amazes some who catch that virus of implicit bias on a tantrum. Now let's not pretend when we all know the only threat for that teacher from those students is the lethal weapon of their skin. Those students no longer included feels exclusion setting in. And what the teacher doesn't comprehend is that the battle is not with them, no, but it's within. Y'all, I'm tired. I'm tired of false perceptions on repeat. Student kicked out school, students out on street. Student not given a chance all because they seemed off. Beat. Not understanding the upbeat of their unique is passionately sweet. See, we teach black and brown students to be managed while white affluent students are taught to manage. Wow, what an advantage. If only half of those students had that advantage planet, they wouldn't be feeling so abandoned. Aggressive actions of an educational system that have left them stranded. So I say, Blow up that pipeline from schoolyards to prisons, for this is not the only option that they've been given when ultimately the root of their crime was just being black, just being brown and living. What I suggest is retain more teachers of color so that we can see, we can have these students see themselves reflected. A culturally diverse staff that will lay the foundation for all kids to feel accepted, cultural connection, creating restorative justice and reforming the system into a better direction. What we need, different tactics, readjusting lenses, zero tolerance rules in our schools are not how we're going to cleanse this when it's long overdue that certain teachers need to be properly trained on how to handle the outcries of our youth. For anything that is not led with love, I see no use. Please pour out water onto these seeds. See how beautifully bright and big they grow, because we'll never know what our future holds if we keep their future on hold, but proceed with care. Know that mistakes are going to be made, but we must adjust the punishment for the price. It's too high to be paid. All the kids really need is an ear, which is completely free. The feeling of knowing, wow, somebody actually listened to me. Parents, educators, teachers, be the positive influence to spark a mind that is great. Because the weight of a positive influence is how we get this pipeline to break. For our kids are the focus. Let's show them what love is. Let's build a foundation where they could fly from. For enough is enough. It's time to disrupt school to prison pipelines no more. School to prison pipelines. 
That's that piece. Thank you, guys. So um, my second poem, my last poem, um, is dedicated to everyone who is suffering or anyone who is suffering with mental illness, especially over these last two years, right? I just want to say thank you. I'm glad that you are still here. And thank you so much for showing up for yourself every day. This poem is called Smile. Every morning I wake up. I take a paintbrush and, and I dip it into the color of mahogany. I take that same paintbrush and begin to paint a smile on my face. Looking in the mirror closely so that I can fill in, you know, all those blotches of abandonment and abuse. No excuse, just cover, girl, girl. Cover up those black-headed secrets you've had hidden inside your pores for years. Or try Maybelline, or maybe lean to the left. Maybe they'll miss your missteps. Inhale breath. <gasps> now go out into this world, girl. Don't forget to smile. my smile. I often mistake it for a tire, you know, putting it on one smirk at a time, hoping that I don't go out into the world to catch words of fire. You know, those same old lines that people ask like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> so I have to smile audaciously and say, I'm fine. Knowing deep down inside that anxiety has moved in on my mind, heartbeats increasing and increasing depression. <laughs> It's been hungry, been feasting, but no time to feel, gotta push through. No time to deal because that's what grandma them say do, right? They say, pray about it, baby. Don't let it get to your head. But grandma, prayer without faith and work is dead. How do you go to the hospital to check on the illnesses of your body instead on what your mind is being fed? So I smile because I am black and I am a woman, feeling like I have to smile because I am a woman and I am black. No matter what I'm stressing, I'm always having to smile through this double oppression, I smile, so that people are comfortable with this flesh, because God forbid I'm seen smiling while black. And now they see that as a threat. So how do you cope? J. Cole. The greatest rapper alive said, it's better to meditate than to medicate. And I think that's dope. But J. Cole, what about the ones so entrapped inside their minds, they can't seem to find their hope, hoping that this ill mental will get easier to battle with thoughts that are so harsh, but at the same time so fragile. Mask on, mask off, mask off. Mask on, smile big, smile bright so they don't ask, hey, are you okay? What's wrong? I heard him say that it was okay not to be okay. So how do you stay afloat? For me, I lift the corners of my mouth because these days, that's the only way it seems that I cope. See, I smile every now and then. See, I smile even though I hurt. See, I smile because I know God is working. So I smile. I smile. Thank you, Tizza.